हम जवान हैं अपनी जान हजार बार दाव पर लगा सकते हैं लेकिन सिर्फ देश के लिए You can't lead a horse to water, but a horse on fire will will find water Jesus. very quickly. I think that's the first. I think that's the first. <laughs> oh, no. Ready. I am the most complete fighter in the world. The guy aim. You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. Stick around. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate on me. Dodge this. We're back, baby. Yes, it's Dodge This Action Movies Unleashed. A big welcome to what people are already calling season. Three. Who boy. If you've listened to us before, I am delighted to welcome you back. And if you've just discovered us, well, I don't want to have favourites, but I'm slightly even maybe more delighted that somehow you have discovered us in the big wide world of podcasts. Here's what you've got coming up. We take a deep dive each episode into one new action movie from anywhere in the world, from big screen blockbusters to DTV delights. Before that, we'll also dissect a few new trailers. And even before that, we'll just sort of have a little catch up chat up top, see what else we've been looking at outside the world of action movies. So there was a little break there uh, over the late summer period. We weren't just out sunning ourselves and uh, rollerblading down beaches. Big tings have been afoot. Where previously I was coming to you from Amsterdam. I'm, I've moved, I'm in a new country. I can't quite believe it yet either, but I'm coming to you live from Mumbai. You will be heartened to know that Matthew Hyten remains in London. However, you may be disheartened to know that the boy is so busy that he will be dipping in and out of this series when he can. Don't worry, though, it's not just going to be me waffling endlessly into the void. I have assembled a team of ragtag mercenaries to join me on a numerous episodes throughout the season. Action aficionados, movie fans, they're like a sort of expendables of action cinema, if you will, which I... I feel like it's almost an insult, uh, <laughs> given given the quality of the Expendables movies. Um, lest you think that Matthew and I have ha- had a falling out or have got beef or I've made him mysteriously disappear since last season, he has sent one of his absolutely classic voice notes for those of you missing his dulcet tones, which I will play for you right now. Hey Dodge this is, uh it's Matt here. Sorry I'm not there due to an ongoing issue uh, with a robot I sent back in time to befriend the future leader of mankind. And I can't stress that point enough, befriend, that's what we've programmed them to do. Uh, I will be in and out of the series this year. Um, but you will have lots of uh, good films coming out with Simon. And uh, in the words of that said robot, I will be back. Uh, put him down, Thomas 1000. Sorry, guys, i got to go. Bye. He's just so busy. He's so busy with his inventions and, and patents. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be joining us once, maybe if we're lucky, twice. Uh, this season leading up to Christmas. Now, as you know by the title, fitting as it is, I wanted to start my adventure in India with a big one. And there's nothing bigger. It's Jawan with SRK, the second SRK movie we've tackled this year. And who better to join me to talk about it than a man whose Indian movie journey has mirrored mine almost exactly since we both went to see RRR together. It's friend of the show, coming live from my old home, not my old house, that would be weird, Amsterdam City. It's Emil Strauker Boudier. First of all, and the crowd goes wild. That mean if 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 the, if you set me up like oh we're we're on parallel paths, that means we're gonna fight at some point. Yes, because it's inevitable. Because there's 
there's only one person that could walk this path and currently there's two of us and now we're still like oh it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine we can we can be friends we'll be the first one to be friends to walk this path together but you, we know that that's not possible i just i just want to say that now well, well <laughs> this goes one of two ways doesn't it it either goes rrr where oh, true. we start as enemies and end as friends. Maybe it goes the way of war, mm. where we start as friends and through some quite just bizarre with... occurrences, <laughs> <laughs> we end up enemies, technically, but it, well, you know, well, nah, yeah. not really. Or maybe, um, no spoilers, we, we look very similar oh. and it, we might be one actor playing two roles. Possibly. Possibly. Either way, it's an incredible makeup job, whoever's done that. Anyway, Emil, welcome back to the pod. Thanks for having me back. And thanks for forcing me to watch Indian movies. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, it's more like just to keep it going, really. Like, I watch Indian movies outside of this. I forced you to watch it's one Indian amazing. movie, which you gladly did. And then Happily you so. went off and did the homework on your own. True. You've watched well, so many true. that I haven't seen so far. And vice versa, you've seen a couple that I haven't seen yet, so it's, that's it's true. fine. We're just covering ground. We're filling in the back catalogue together. Yeah, but it is fun now also having seen like a couple of movies with the same actor in it, because then you sort of under, start to understand the, the fandom of it as well and why yeah. they're so beloved. Yes. Start seeing like the tropes and the sort of the 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 way things are plotted and the the, yeah how it all pieces together. I, th I feel like we'll talk about this a lot when we get into Joanne. <laughs> Before that, though, it's been a while, but, you know, anything in recent memory that's been um, keeping you busy media-wise? Uh, yes, usually there's movies or TV shows here, but recently I've, I've been playing uh, the Spider-Man game from, like, 2018, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it that, that yeah. long ago? It's, <laughs> uh, it's on the PlayStation 5 now, like in an updated version, which is why I'm like, oh, you know what? Yes, actually, there's a second one coming out. I love Spider-Man. Yes, actually. Everybody seems to love this game, so how bad could it be? And it, it is awesome. It is incredibly fun. Just I remember when it York. came out and hearing it was very, very good. Just that, so I know also from like the early 2000s, I believe there was a Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 1 that everybody loved for the web swing. Yeah, I definitely had it on one of the playstations one through three i would say <laughs> i don't remember i don't remember which but i remember i had it and it was very enjoyable there's been a there's been a ton of them um that one spider-man i played before this I, I can't even remember what the title of it is but that you had to play as different spider-mans in different universes and this was before like all the marvel universe you, you, oh wow okay stuff yeah um which was super fun because then you had Spider-Man Noir and you played all these stealth missions and, uh, um, in, in the 1930s because that's when that oh, Spider-Man cool. was. Yeah, it's fun. And, but, you know, but this swinging around New York is just a pure joy, especially if you've, I guess, grew up uh, reading Spider-Man comics. That is like, yay! Not even a video games podcast. But that's what's been keeping me occup occupied. And then I saw Jawan twice. So you there's all my time. I also watch wrestling and Formula One. And Formula One these days has like a race every week now. Gosh, so and Joanne twice time. is the best part of several days. To be fair, yeah, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Well, uh, in light of the upcoming um, Expendables four being released, um, <laughs> Matthew and I talked about. Um, he was like, "Oh yeah, I want to. I want to watch it. I'm definitely going to see Expendables." So I was like, "Okay, well, maybe we'll try and find time." to do the episode on that and then, and then it came out like last week and i have not read one good thing about it but to put in the work i caught up on the ones i hadn't seen really? which was two two and three okay. um and um i mean they're not good are they they're not good I, don't I would remember say really particularly enjoying <laughs> one. I felt like no. oh, there's a little bit of what I want to see in this, and then a lot of yammering. There was definitely I, a reason I, I hadn't watched two and three. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. After watching one, which was I think one maybe go, eh. and then I watched two, and two was like, I mean, f fine. It did all it all it did was made me when I watched the trailer for four, kind of miss the like physical stunts and. Mm less cg and that sort of thing because sure. <laughs> the trailer for four just like anyway this week i watched expendables 3 which again 
was not really good. I would say I would say probably worse than two Jeez. for any number of reasons. Um, on the plus side, in our Indian movie um, history journey, mm-hmm. me and my uh, girlfriend watched an SRK classic, not an action movie, but a rom com from I think nineteen ninety seven or nineteen ninety eight <laughs> called Forgive the pronunciation Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. Oh, which sure. fans fans of uh, Bollywood movies will surely know as the sort of um, spiritual successor to DDLJ. It's got um, SRK and the and the same lady opposite him. Um, I, I'm not sure it was as good as DDLJ. Yeah, it's definitely of a time, thing. but I couldn't tell you what time that is. <laughs> it's 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 uh, okay. India in 1998. But at a time where they appear to have been colonized by an American university. And so it's like a sort of cross between like Greece and Saved by the Bell. I'm in. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I mean, there is a lot to enjoy in it, but it is. I mean, it's just very difficult to sort of come to it 30 years later as someone who didn't grow up here and, and not just be just like your eyes just kind of going i What's what happening? it what is yeah <laughs> extraordinary but you know very nice to see where us sik came from and and also similar to dglj he just basically plays a prick in this movie and i don't get his appeal i don't get it <laughs> what i get it now but in these in ddlj and in this movie he is just uh, to me he is a prick and women fall for him he's just like rude uh, and obnoxious yeah, 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 sure. throughout yeah, the whole yeah. movie. I mean, I mean that that's most like James Bond was an asshole most of the time too. Yeah. And he just yeah. like, yeah, but I still get this girl and I still right. I'm an asshole. I make snidey remarks as I kill people. <laughs> it's very interesting. But I mean, yes, it's very like in terms of like cultural perspective, very uh very well worth yeah, having a look at. On that same note, it's like, well, if we look back at movies from Hollywood in the mid '90s, there's probably going to be a bunch as well where you're going to go, Eesh, but yeah, oh, hundred percent, yeah, a completely different uh, culture. At, at yeah, that to it, it's like, you know, we look back at '90s jarring. movies and go, oh boy, the, well, look what we used to wear. Like, oh my god, things were so different. But I'm like, this is 30 years ago in Indian cinema. Like, you know, there's just so many levels of like things. Yeah. Things are different. Things were different. That, need that to don't be unpacked. Yeah, that like I'm like I I didn't live here then. I don't know why this is this is it is what it is, but very interesting. Um one of the movie that I um that I watched was called Till Death, which seemed to really sort of fly under the radar. I think it came out a couple of years ago. It's it's sort of qu- quite a low I want to say medium, but f- probably fairly low, low to medium budget movie with Megan Fox where um oh, she okay wakes up and her husband uh, has killed himself and handcuffed himself to her. Whoa. That's, that's the sort of premise. Uh, and she's in like a house in the middle of nowhere and things unfold. Oh, it's a, I like the premise. It's quite, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's efficient, I would say, lean. Mm. You know, it's like 90 yeah. minutes. It takes a little, little while to get going. But when it does, it's just like, this is what we're doing. We've got like a single location. It's mainly Megan Fox. There's a couple of baddies. It's sort of a mystery. Oh, it's like a thriller. There's creeping. She's being hard. Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't love it, but I thought it was solid. I mean, I love a movie in one location. Twelve Anger Men, my favorite movie. <laughs> uh... It's really similar to that. <laughs> Is it? Well, then I'm going to watch it. Thank you for the yeah, recommendation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like 12 Angry Men if 12 Angry Men was shot uh, on a Bulgarian soundstage. Okay. Okay. So better lighting. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very affordable um, replicas of New York streets. <laughs> and and also just the idea of it being 90 minutes these days is a, is a mwah, treat. Bang. <laughs> a Let's just do it. Press play. <laughs> Exactly. It's like the tra- a trailer. I'll watch this before I watch a movie. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of trailers. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, we got three of them. I put them in the document in the order of uh, how good I thought they would be. I wanted to start 
Fair. With a movie called Freelance. Why tangent? When you're typing in a Google Doc, you t- you paste in a link and mm-hmm. then you press tab and it changes it to a nice little, oh, like a little, um, Button? I don't know what you call it, like a little block, little yeah. YouTube logo. And every, without fail, every single time I do this, I do like a few of them, fine. And then you paste one in and it just doesn't want to change. Wanna do just doesn't want to change it's not it's not related to action movies well it makes you furious and well i you might set me don't set me off as an ignition point for <laughs> exactly. an action movie, as far as i'm concerned <laughs> i really want a bird of prey to just be about the egg sandwich that she like didn't get or wasn't good at the beginning where she dropped I oh forget. man but yeah just trying to get no she got rerouted anyway that's what i want and i didn't get it and it was frustrating and it was i like, really wanted birds of prey just to end I just wanted it to end. Anyway, this first one had John Cena in it, so I had to put it in for the Emil episode. It's called Freelance. Thank you. It's, as they say in the screen in big letters, from the director of Taken, which I feel like is a double-edged sword, given that the first Taken was good and the sequels were diminishingly awful i would say so it taken yeah. almost sort of has like a bad memory for some reason because the sequels i feel like dragged it down a bit but um it's like saw you just have to remember the first one was good yeah the first one was good and this is looks like one of those movies where you just go oh boy i don't think it's going to be good but it could surprise yeah i got lost city knockoff vibes and I really it like is a Lost little bit City. Lost City, actually, isn't it? Just also with the way it looks, and like there's a there's a Jack dude trying to save a lady uh, in the jungle, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and with a, you know third wheel in this. Particular it's got um, those sort of Luke Besson's production company vibes. I don't think they huh. make stuff anymore, but like Hitman's Bodyguard, right? Um, Two Days in okay. Paris, those sorts of like mid budget. <laughs> action movies with which quips. can be very enjoyable it's just like the quality of the jokes in this was, wasn't particularly good and it was very difficult to tell the quality of the action from the trailer yeah which i'm like that doesn't have to be good like but then the other stuff really needs to be good which is what yeah, i enjoyed about lost cities it's like you're, you're watching it because of them the, the fucking uh, sandra bullock and channing tatum yeah lost city was enjoyable very enjoyable i, like, I think like yeah you'll take maybe a point or two less on the action if it's like if there's some if the chemistry in and the you know, back and forth between the two leads is, is fun and this yeah. just seems sort of very average and then it got the kicker with you know the third wheel looking at john cena's dick and going whoa mr petite not so petite and it's like oh well, that's okay is that what is that's, that that's gonna be the level isn't it <laughs> the best joke was in mr. the trailer petite, not so yeah. petite. It was like sheesh okay i don't know i mean i like john cena as a comic actor and i you know he's clearly good and big an action but it's like oh i didn't really see enough of either of those in this i should say alison brie is the other um person in this <laughs> well th- those are the two people that we hope have for the chemistry right is basically what i'm saying yeah if they're if they don't have chemistry which wasn't proven in this trailer then no. uh yeah it's not gonna be a good movie tbc it's coming out pretty <laughs> soon i suspect it'll be on streaming within minutes of that it's got a very uh content vibe to it this <laughs> What do you mean, content vibe? I don't know. You know, just like some movies look like they're just made to be content. They're made w- not with the best intentions. Maybe they're made. They're churned Evil out intentions. to fill out the Netflix catalog. Oh, okay. Content on a, a streaming network. Gotcha. Yeah, that sort of thing. You know, just your red notice. notice. It your did feel very stone. yeah, pain by numbers, but yeah, that's sometimes that's also just the trailer. And like the trailer was very true based. I'm willing to be surprised. Yes. I'll tell you what I I was was... surprised by the trailer. Were you going to say that? There we go. (laughs) (laughs) This is just a teaser, um, but uh, I'm excited to see it whenever whenever it arrives. Uh, It's called Layers of Lies, and and it is quote the first Finnish Iranian action movie. (laughs) Which means they have been other co-productions between the two countries. Maybe it was a drama or a comedy, and yeah, but it wasn't an action movie. (laughs) Right. That really, I wanted to be a cooking movie in my heart. It's just like, wow, you made a fun cooking movie, but the next thing is going to be an action movie. 
Right. It's so interesting that by combining those three words, they were like the first ever. Uh, it's love, like when I The Rock that. quotes stats of his movies, you know, that haven't done that well, but he somehow engineers them to be like, it's the first of the, <laughs> that premiered on the whatever this, and we're doing great. <laughs> I really dug the trailer just because not a word was said. It was I know. It's a, good, it's a good teaser, isn't it? And I think... I, I mean, you know, Iran is on everyone's minds at the moment for like all the wrong reasons, but they do yeah. make movies in Iran. I, I don't know if I've seen any of them, but I know they don't really make action movies. They're a lot of quite sort of serious things. And Finland, Sisu. We saw Sisu, we saw Sisu quite <laughs> last season. Um, so that's one s sort of action movie, I suppose, that came out of Finland. But the combination... Poof. I listened to a very interesting interview with the um, director, producer, star of this recently. And it's sort of one of those like labor of love projects that's taken years and years and years to get off the ground. And I mean, it looks great. It looks, it looks like, like it's going to be a lot of fun. combo by those two countries. Yeah. This two. dude is yeah. a, a, a proper uh, ninja and he's putting it all out there. I, I can't wait. I hope this has been picked up by a distributor and I hope we get to see it soon because I know it like premiered at a, a festival in uh, LA recently. So some people got to see it and apparently it is a good. All right. All right. All right. One more. Come on. One more for you. This one, absolutely just a slam dunk. It's called 100 Yards. Uh, it premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. Um, apparently, it's already been acquired by Wellgo, good. which is good news because that means it'll probably be on a higher streaming service. That's the one that I pay three ninety nine a month for and watch less than one movie a month Ooh, on. I would say. Well, so. <laughs> but uh, they do get some good stuff coming through. This looks like a delightful period kung fu epic. Great cinematography, great oh performances, God, yes. big old backlot sets of oldy worldy china you love to see it and it looks like it's got some tasty old uh fight things going on too it also looks like it so easily could have a video game tie-in by the way um because they essentially just the, if i think the premise of the movie is just him expanding his territory it sounds like that yeah that's what i gather from it it's like well my you know the first generation came here and taught kung fu now there's you know within 100 yards of the entrance and my grandfather expended it by two blocks what can i do and yeah. then you just see him finding a bunch of people i'm like is this sort of like pokemon bosses is he just making his way through the city <laughs> and just beating people up to gain terror? like i'm all in and also yeah, you should do a video game of that it looks amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> like try might make it look like that yeah is it like he's expanding his territory and he's like a goodie or is it like now you've got too big and you're sort of taking over Maybe. the city oh okay. interesting politics but yeah. mainly mainly people like with cool swords and stuff Getting I'm into assuming, it. Yeah, but I'm assuming there's a moment where, hey, your dad wouldn't have wanted this. What do you yes. know? Yes. What do you know what my dad wanted? <laughs> You're um, not my dad. I think that'll be the emotional arc. But yeah, look amazing. I, it's funny you said I put this into your, in the order of what I think was going to, like, um, the quality of them. Mm -hmm. And I did write here best of both worlds in this thing because it was like, yeah, this sort of has the beats of the first one, which which gives you sort of, they show a little bit more of the story. Yeah. Which freelance, that's all they did, which I hate. It's like, now you just put the entire movie in it. it. It's supposed to make me go, ooh, intriguing. I would like to see the rest, <laughs> I please. <wonder. laughs> yeah. And not, this is the summation of the movie. Do you want to continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And with this 100 yards, yeah, best of both worlds. It looked amazing, it, but it didn't give away too much, I don't think. Much no, like it just was trailer. like the premise like, okay, that sounds pretty interesting. And then, like, look at all this cool stuff. I'm in. Only a little bit, and then we're going to cut away. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Oh, okay, we did it. It was the trailers. It always takes longer than we think it's going to. Emil, I don't know if you've checked the runtime on the movie Jawan, but it's approximately over three hours. Oh, no. We've got to get into the cinema. Wait, it's fine. Let's, uh, but I need to do, I, I need some popcorn. Okay, I'll you meet you in seat, there. I'll find you in there. Now, our feature presentation. Dodge this. All right, it's a big one. I saw this a couple of weeks ago now after 
floundering. The the is it irony or does it just make sense? I now am in Mumbai. I was so excited to see the new SRK mass entertainer action extravaganza in the cinema, and then it came out and there was no English subtitles. Of course, of course, why would there be? I'm in India, but it just felt, it was like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> am I never going to be able to see this in the cinema? And then after absolutely nerding out for a couple of weeks or a week and a half after it came out, I finally tracked down one screening. Uh, and I was like, I'm going I'm immediately, uh, m- middle of the day on a, you know, Wednesday or whatever it was. Um, got it in. Great times. You, awesome. however, saw it before I did. Which yeah. Livid, and now after. livid about that. And now, <laughs> and then you went to see it again. Yeah, because like it has a bunch of screenings here with English subtitles. It's great. <laughs> I could I could have gone in the morning if I wanted to. Unbelievable. I went at night, but I came all the way to India, <laughs> and they wouldn't let me see it. They I have get a it. bit of a I history with the English. I respect that they don't want to do subtitles. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope, absolutely. Absolutely fine. Don't want to get into it. Thank you. Anyway, I managed to see it. But what I'm saying is, it was a couple of weeks ago. Whereas you have it fresh in your old brain box. Somewhat. I mean, ago. as much, uh, <laughs> I don't know how much that's worth with these masala movies. No, true, true. So I think maybe happening. at the beginning of this, I will say this would probably be a sort of light spoilery chat about, about this movie. If we're going to go deep, let's flag it. But it, I think it's very tricky to talk about certain parts of this movie mm-hmm. without sort of revealing you know, revealing some of the reveals that you will see. Yeah, and there's a there's a ton of them. So yeah, I would yeah. say if you if you're if look now, uh if there's any screenings near you. Yes. If there are, go see it and then walk come out that back. three and a half hours. Then come back to this. Mm. Um because it's well worth it. Well, since you've seen it fresh in the last few days, yes. God bless you. Please and the best of luck. Please, can you sum up the plot? Good luck. <laughs> it's very easy. So there's a military man who falls in love. Without with doing a... any major spoilers yet. <laughs> no, but that's... Imp- well, okay, no. My summation, without any spoilers, this is yeah. a movie about why voting is important. That's what that's the whole movie is about. That's it. <laughs> that is literally what the whole movie is about. Good tagline, actually. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get me to go and see an action movie in the cinema. Uh, it, look, no, no, no. What, it's, uh, if okay, if you haven't seen the trailer, go into it with just knowing that this entire movie is about how important your vote is. Then watch the trailer and tell me, tell me then that you don't want to see that movie, Simon. Because when you watch the trailer, it's impossible. This movie is clearly not about that. What is he going on about? But it is. You're and right. For the entirety of it. It's like part of me at a certain point was like episode one, try it with a treaty talk. And it's so boring. This is so exciting. But it's <laughs> like, but it is just about politics. It's like you don't know that it's about voting until the point where SRK delivers like a five minute monologue basically down the camera lens to saying camera. those exact words. <laughs> and you're like, okay, okay, I guess, yep, sure. He's spelt but, it out. Fair, fair yeah, play. Fair play to it's him. His entire motivation throughout the entire thing. Okay, so give us the actual like plot, you know, for the, the plot and I'm the uninitiated. Do it in chronological order, because otherwise it's gonna be too complicated. <laughs> Good luck. Because what in I chronological is, order it, yeah in chronological order which is because it's way easier than what the movie does because it's already complicated oh, in chronological order but then yeah Indian cinema is like but here's what we're gonna do <laughs> how are you gonna do it in chronological order i can barely remember it in the order it happens in the movie no so what happens is there's a military man he falls in love with a woman he goes on a military operation his men, uh, d- some of his men die uh, and get wounded because their weapons don't work. This, uh, he calls out the company that makes these already, guns. I, I already forgot about that part. <laughs> so that's so integral. It's like the, the motivation of the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. Um, There's so much. There's so much. <laughs> so military man falls in love with a woman, goes on a military operation. His men die because of malfunctioning weapons. The person who makes those weapons um, gets called in front of like a court or like a, a, I don't know, a committee of some sort. He gets called out. He says, not my fault. They should have read the manual. 
Uh, he picks up a gun and says, like, may I demonstrate, uh, you know, that these guns don't work. Uh, he points it at him, shoots, doesn't work. Uh, that bad guy, like his company gets blacklisted. He holds a grudge. He then goes to um, this military man's cabin, kills uh, his, uh, uh, no, doesn't kill his wife. Um, tries and kills him by shooting him out of an airplane. Uh, he's presumably dead. His shooting wife goes to prison. Airplane, of course. Uh, his wife goes to prison. Let me finish. His wife goes to prison. <laughs> it's Emil. Emil. His wife it's goes 20, to prison. 27. His wife goes to prison, uh, is about to be hung, um, which, by the way, the bad guy comes to the prison to make fun of her and explain w what happens when you get hung, which is fucking disgusting. Um she almost gets on. She faints. They feel her uh, pulse. Uh, it turns out she's pregnant because that's how that works, um, which means she cannot be hung until the child is five years old. This child grows up in prison uh, on his fifth birthday. His mom delivers a speech, says, you are going to run this prison one day and you're going like, to uh, lead a revolution. You're going to be so important. Um, then he goes, lives his life, comes back, becomes the warden of the prison. In prison, he recruits six uh, women <laughs> who form going. like the A team, uh, and he goes out and commits these terrorist act in the name of socialism. Essentially, um, he ev all of those women have like one of them is the daughter of a farmer, and like the taxes on farmers are so ridiculously high compared to that for the rich uh, that they can't earn a living and they're ashamed and like ten thousand a year kill themselves. Uh, and so he demands that all this money comes from, and here it is, the bad guy arms dealer who has been paying the government for like, for bribe, you know, just bribing them. Um, and the government has billed him out. Now it's time for him to bill them out. So that's how the bad guy comes back into it. Basically, bad guy just keeps going after this now returned sworn enemy that got his company blacklisted. And... Um, as they are continuing to try and better <laughs> the Indian like Still uh, healthcare system and farming regulations, <laughs> uh, that that all comes to a head in the finale. And that is Juwan. <laughs> Chronological Thanks so much for joining us on Dodge This. That's all the time we have for you <laughs> this episode. I really <laughs> hope I did well. I really that hope was I did well. The plot of Joan <gasps> succinctly explained by Emil. Very impressive, to be fair. Doing it in chronological order makes it sort of make sense, doesn't it? Do you yeah. think that they come up with the plot in that order and then they, they kind of like write it on like pieces of paper and on the wall and then they the rearrange it all. It. Yes. Extraordinary. I don't know where to start with this, Emil. Um, I will say I enjoyed this movie a great deal. I was very excited to see it in the cinema. I wish I could have seen it with A, a full cinema of people. It, it was not that. It was... Uh, it was, I think, about, <laughs> I want to say, under 10. Oh, man. Oh, that is a shame. Yeah. Um, but I had a very comfortable reclining chair, so that was nice. And it was a big screen and great sound. Um, but yeah, it, I, I didn't get that full sort of like people wooing and excited to see SRK experience, but I did so feel joyous. that within me. Good. I mean, it's hard not to. They do a lot of entrances. And I'm really, oh I mean, obviously the wrestling fan in me loves that whenever somebody important comes, they're like, they have their own theme music. They walk down to the place where the action is going to take place. It's essentially a wrestling entrance every single time. Oh my That's God. I mean, you know, like, oh, this person is important because they just got an entrance. Other people, well, whatever. But we know who the main female lead is because everything goes slow-mo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, there's so much slow-mo. SRK gets... Min minor spoilers, but I think we know this from the trailer. He gets two entrances in this movie. Yes, <laughs> which is uh, which is incredible. Um, yeah, it's uh, there were parts where I was just like, "Oh, this is what an absolute what an absolute joy!" It it's it's just insane in the best way. And then there were other parts where I was like. This is dreadful. Oh. <laughs> and, and it's sort of, there were more parts where I was excited than the dreadful parts. But in that same way that 
all of these kind of like mass entertainers do when they're just trying to be so many things often at the same time to all people. It, it's just, yeah, it's like, it goes from amazing action to like, like now we're in a rom-com to like, oh, this is so on the nose. It's just like, there's just so much going on. But as a whole, um, yeah, I really had a great time. So my current theory on this is, uh, it, 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 yeah, it's that um, making a steel bowl and like to do that out of a sheet of metal, you have to bang on it with a hammer real hard. And like, that's not subtle in any way. But if you do it enough times, you end up with a really nice curved bowl. Uh, so the end product doesn't really show the work that goes into it. And it's, you're right. What is this analogy? Well, like, I can't tell if I love it or not. Follow me on this. <laughs> there's some very jarring moments. Like on the train, there's a very jarring um, death that happens. And I was like, that, it, I don't know if I can recover. Like that was something. Sh what? just happened but then you have to wait it out because in the conclusion one they tie together so much more than you ever think they would so many reveals and so many little no this mattered and like we're gonna follow <laughs> yeah. up on this and we're, we're gonna so it feels at times for, for, for me anyway like you're being punched around also with some cultural differences where you're having like is this normal how am i supposed to interpret this how, yeah, how yeah. are they viewing this because i'm looking obviously from a different point of view Sure. It's like, what position? So, you, so you're constantly being banged around, I think. But at the end, I'm like, yeah, but that was, that was really good. I mean, at it's, the end it's it, a great time at the old pictures, as we would call them. It's a bloody great time at the movies. <laughs> yeah, because there's like plenty of weird moments as well. But then uh, I posted this on Instagram as well. There's, um, And this is not a spoiler because the man's screen time, I think, is seven seconds in reality. And it's, uh, you know, a better Bane because he has a cheetah. And that man <laughs> is in the movie for seven seconds. Seven seconds. But it's a Bane slash Mad Max Fury Road ripoff. So bizarre. And he has a cheetah. So and bizarre. And it's only seven seconds. It's, it's sort of oddly wasted when you're like, okay, there's a, there's a, a whole seemingly you could use. Russian Bane? Don't know. It's but mafia money. He's then he was Italian. gone. Then he was just gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this movie sets out its stall in the first couple of minutes. Like, SRK's name doesn't appear on the screen until after the incredible intro. I mean, the bar is set. I was excited going in. And then that sort of introductory scene where there's, <laughs> there's a horse on fire. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying no. that's the sort of level that we're at where there's yeah. the yeah, there's your classic no animals were harmed no snakes That's no horses no bulls no cows it's the same warning that we had on RRR and we didn't know why they would be so specific until we saw the shit that went down in that movie yeah and in the first couple of minutes there's a, a horse on fire runs across the screen and i was like well this is already amazing yep <laughs> I, that is to know if, if you're not uh as some people are uh our, our friend kiki uh who likes bollywood movies but as i asked her have you seen this one she's like i've been told not to watch and like you're right there's a, there's a dog <laughs> that gets killed and that you would hate that like that would ruin the entire movie for you yeah um yeah. so the, be, yeah be aware that there's it's very graphic yeah uh the, needlessly so by the way it's <laughs> this and can we talk about the like the idiosyncrasies in that of what they show and what they don't show because a man sure. and woman are not allowed to kiss on screen yes. i believe that's true yeah but the amount it in that same scene and i feel okay talking about it because it's the opening of the movie so no story has happened yet there is a slow motion shot of a grown up making a child shoot presumably his own mom like yep. th uh, yep. that's why i mean it's beating a steel sheet of paper like into uh, yeah a steel sheet into submission into creating something yeah. that ends up being cohesive uh, i hesitate to say beautiful cuz that's very subjective um 
But it's sort of extraordinary what is allowed and what isn't and what is yeah. seem seemingly acceptable for like, bring the whole family to this movie. Don't worry, there'll be no one kissing in it, but there will be so much violence. Yes, <laughs> like with so much. And it's something that I do need to remind myself of occasionally in talking about these movies to uh, you recommend them only and be like sure if you want to check them out check them out i don't like if you don't like violence you're not gonna yeah. like this because well i wanted graphic. to take my girlfriend to this because i was like oh you know it'll probably it'll have some like big song and dance numbers and and then Which I it was does like, you that but you would not like 70 percent of this movie <laughs> yeah or if something as visceral as the killing of a dog like can take you out of it completely then yeah, yeah. unfortunately Please don't watch this movie. No, the no. horse. We don't know if it's. I think it's fine. We didn't. I don't think. We assume he was running, that dies, running to so. water. Yeah, you yeah. can't lead a horse to water, but a horse on fire will will find water very quickly. I think that's the Jesus. phrase. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, but that it it has a bunch of that. Where, like the, especially between the romance stuff and the action, like the difference in what they show there. Um, like there's there's actual censorship. I don't want to talk about the scene. I don't think because if you are going to watch it, that journey is one hell of an emotional roller coaster. Oh yeah, but they some, censor there's a, something pixelated in this. There's something pixelated, and it's like, huh? You just I've had totally forgotten. But you're that. fine with me watching a child kill his own mother? Huh? All right. Cultural differences. Yeah. But yeah, and also like that happens in a in a flashback. Not within a flashback yet, but that happens a bunch in this movie as well. <laughs> it's hard to know when you're in a yeah, flashback. So it's also if you're going to watch, if you like watching movies, Buzz, this is, you want to follow the plot, don't do that because you're going to lose track <laughs> so quickly with this movie. <laughs> well, this this is quite interesting, isn't it? Because I think, uh, I can't remember if it exactly happened in Patan as well, but I know that movie was pretty steeped in flashback. And I'm So I'm I wanted to rewatch say, that now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that the extended version is on Amazon Prime. Woo! I'll tell you one thing that movie needs is a few more minutes on the old runtime. But it seems like a, a trope of uh, these huge mass entertainment masala movies is the um, interval block, which is like a massive either action scene or revelatory moment that happens mm -hmm. just before the interval. This definitely happened in RRR classically was our minds were blown and like, so what much. is going on? I don't quite remember what, what happened in Patan. Matthew and I spent the interval going, are we in a flashback? Are we still in a... So I know there was something of that ilk. And then I guess this one solidified it for me when the... The scene before the interval is like this massive batshit reveal where you're like, what the actual fuck is going on? And then there's an interval where I don't know. I watched this in Mumbai, so I had to wait like 15 minutes oh, before, before anyone explained. We need that. Sit, I need, I said to watch like five different commercials with SRK in them for all manner of products. Hell yeah. uh, I should have gone to get some food. I just went for a wee. <laughs> anyway. Also good choice. Solid choice. <laughs> Solid choice. It's a long movie. And then my point is we start back up with basically a, a, a 30 minute long explainer that sort of irons out where we are in the movie up to this point. Uh, which is exactly what happened in RRR, right? Where yeah. you're like, oh, um, oh, why is he being such a dick? And then they're like, well, let me tell let you me a few things. Dude. Yeah. And then in this one, you're like, what the shitting shit is going on? And then they're like, well, why don't you listen to a little story where I explain the whole plot that's happened up to now and put everybody in their place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you know that maybe your favorite movie stars that you thought were going to be baddies might actually not be baddies. So don't stress it. <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. That's part of what is mind blowing every time, though, with these movies where everything is jarring, but then they take a step back and like, oh, we're going to explain this to you or. Uh, we're going to progress this relationship within a song to the point of engagement. Don't worry about it. Uh, we're going to take care of it. Um, oh, my God. They get married so fast in the rom-com bit. 
Oh, but or engaged. We, we engaged. don't have the time to There's spend no on time. that. I mean, they spend the solid, you know, 20 minutes being a rom-com. <laughs> it's, but yeah, it, it's like a, a montage, but it isn't a montage. It's just like quickly hit all the beats. No, but that's exactly go. what it is. But it's sort of a weird self-aware one because they're singing to camera. Yeah. Which, which I think is the odd thing for uh, any Western eyes, potentially. But it's, essentially, it's just that. It's... Um, when I watched the all the Rocky movies uh, last year, I believe it was, I love the fourth one, mostly because it has four excellent montages in it. Uh, <laughs> it just does a great job. And the, like they're all good. Is that how they number the Rocky movies based on how many montages I, there unfortunately are? Unfortunately not. <laughs> oh, okay. Otherwise, they would continually get better, but they don't. And but this is well, like that. It, they just do that. It's like, yeah, now we're going to do because that's quicker and more efficient and, and like, like getting you emotionally on board uh, with this as well, because it is it's cute as hell. Like it is a really, really sweet, like sugary rom-com. Yeah. I mean, it fully is a completely different tone to, you know, the yeah. rest of the parts of the movie. And, and by design, you know, that's that's how this overarching sort of mega mass entertainer movie works right it's literally meant to be like this is the rom-com part for the people who don't like the the knives going in people's eyes and eyes horses and on fires <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely extraordinary what i really enjoy during uh, you know inc increasingly in um the this masala genre of movie is the sort of you're right they do there is so much batshit going on but they are very good at, at kind of tying up all of these threads and even you know things where maybe you would kind of overlook it and and just think nothing of it but but you're my little keen eye like for example the opening scene of this movie a, a, a tiny little Asian boy who's not Indian, but he's from sort of somewhere else, m maybe slightly more East Asia, <laughs> says to a man who's lost his memory, like, when I grow up, I will tell you who you are or I'll find out who you are or something like that. Yeah. And then and then I'm you sort of out. forget about it for the best part of two hours. And then just before like the reveal, you're like, of course it is. Of course. Of course that's who that is. Of absolute course. But like that, but that <laughs> line so alone, that's an entire movie. You yes. could make that an entire yes. 90 minute. But it's easy, just like a throwaway. Little kid finding out who this mystery man is. That is a great movie that, that I would want to see. Wait, this kid gets rescued in a village by this strange man who's lost his memory and he's going to find out who he is. That is a movie I would want to watch. It it gets about essentially maybe five minutes of screen time. Like the wrap up is is quite, quite quick. But yeah. it's very satisfying. It's a good reveal. Like, that isn't wasn't it? just a nice moment. That wasn't just a little kid like, oh, we're going to have this scene where the little kid goes up and like shows his love for this man and his gratitude for saving the village from these evil people, uh, from the bad guys in the, uh, who are attacking them. But then it has a payoff. And that's, I find that so satisfying that it's not forgotten. It's like, no, no, no. Right. We, we remember that moment. Just there's so many of those little bits that are just like, they're just sort of textbook screenwriting, I guess. It's, there's so many things where when it switches to a rom-com and it's like oh he's a he's a single guy but he's got a secret and, and uh, now there's like a child is in charge of finding him a wife and then and then you're like <laughs> goodness how's this gonna go i wonder who the and then like five for i i'm not very good at like seeing this seeing the so far in advance <laughs> I like four seconds before it happens. I'll be like, "Of course, that's, of, of course, course. <laughs> of course." I'm the same. I'm the same. <laughs> What's the most ludicrous <laughs> but perfect thing that could happen now to set this movie on an insane course? And then that happens every time. It's oh, it's the best. It's the best. I mean, it's completely absurd, but it's like so perfect for just to set up yeah. the insanity that, that comes after yeah. it. I, I don't want to give more details, but I'm, no. I feel like you could literally say everything that happens in this movie. And yeah, you'd, you'd you know, quote unquote, spoil some stuff. But just watching it unfold is just like a thing of such beauty and joy. Yes. 
my, I think I had a recent conversation that kind of solidified this for me as far as like what, my, what I guess what my pitch is in, um, in actually general attitude in watching movies. Um, whenever somebody like nitpicks something like, well, that's not realistic or that wouldn't happen or where would, you know, the classic being, uh, you know, in car chase movies, you never see them at a gas station. Like, <laughs> but the question right. you need to ask yourself is, but do you want to see that? I think that's minutia. You don't want to see that. You want to get to the good bits. True. And that's what they continuously do. It's like, we're going to just do all the bet bit, best bits of a, you know, 90 to 120 minute uh, rom-com, but we're going to do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. only that, you're going to get two excellent songs out of it with giant dance numbers. True story. Uh, so, hey, if you like Eurovision, tick, you got it. Yes. Yeah. And they, but, and they do that with the action as well. Essentially, it's like, oh, man, we wasted some time with this rom-com stuff. Better catch up with this action stuff. <laughs> And for character introduction, I think it's the same thing, though. It's that, like you said, like it's basic screenwriting is like, but who's here? Who have we introduced? What's important? It's like, yeah, so do that. It's the it's the logical next step. Yeah. So do it. <laughs> There's yeah, there is a leads to B in every situation. There's like there's like surprises, but they're sort of like earned it's a direct path i don't think i'm explaining this very well but you know you, you, there's like this whole crew and every single one has a story and then all the stuff that you sort of touched upon in your um ex explaining the plot for <laughs> two and a half hours <laughs> was like all i just picture it as that sort of meme from uh is it workaholics or no? It's all sunny with oh, all yeah, the, yeah. the strings, the like murder wall or whatever it is. <laughs> the conspiracy wall, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that, but it all makes sort of perfect sense. In but a it way. makes sense. Yes. Yeah. It's that's like, a great description. You could take the movie, snip it up into little pieces, and you can arrange it in a way that it does form a cohesive strand, right? And and to your point of just showing the good bits, I think you're right. Like in the rom com section. That that sort of sort of works, and you know, I, I didn't really need a, a one hour rom com, so I'd be happy if there wasn't a rom com. But I understand that is a part of this, so fine, oh, yeah. I'll take the bullet points of the rom com <laughs> as delivered. But then, sort of later in the movie, they're like, "Now's the section of the action movie where we do the car stuff." But really, do, does it ma does it matter? Like if it looks like it's in a real place or should we just do it on the emptiest roads in the world that are clearly like just these, like a purpose built road in the middle of like a, I don't know, a desert, I guess. Yeah. Just try not to look at all that. Look, a car's on fire and flipped over. It's like, it's sort of like the bullet points of that as well. Like it's like in the yeah. Matrix Reloaded where they built that stretch of road to yeah. do the incredible car chase, but they filled it in with like other CG cars. This, they're <laughs> just like, no, nah, just leave it that completely it. empty apart from so the cars. So the cool shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, well I, well, I guess it is what it is. I don't imagine they were like, we ran out of budget for, for to put other cars in. I don't know. I just, it just seemed so sort of weird. I don't think so. No, I think it's a very deliberate choice because in a, uh, um, Attack Part One, I believe it also happened. No, it, no, it's in Bataan. Sorry, where uh, John Abrams is on the road uh, with a with an RPG in the middle of Dubai, and, and nobody's around. I was yeah. like, yeah, because that looks way cooler. But but that was it, in the it, middle it, of Dubai, which looks, you know, quite cool, depending on how you look at it. This is just in but like empty? nowhere. There's just, it's just like a massive highway with like an eight lane highway in the middle yeah. of a desert with just these trucks and cars on it and no one else. <laughs> yes. However, all you need is one scene before that where they go through a diversion that says like road closed under construction. Any, I don't anything. Wanna, I don't want to watch that because that's unrealistic <laughs> as hell too. And it's, the movie starts off with with uh, an unrealistic diversion of like, really, that's a big gamble you just took on that actually happening. And that's exactly what I mean. Don't get stuck in the minutia of what reality is. Sure. That doesn't help you. I get it's it. It's an emotional storytelling. <laughs> it's an epic operatic storytelling. We're not concerned with the minutia. Especially the reason I brought that the Pasan scene up is because when I watched it the first time, it's like you go, How but they see him moving the other him. direction. 
<laughs> move aside. Why are you still driving towards this man with the RPG in his hand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because that's cool. Because like, that's, that's the thing that looks image. the coolest. The same exact thing happens here. They're all standing on a bridge waiting to jump on these trucks. I'm like, you're telling me you, they can't see that? There's nobody else around. There's literally, <laughs> it's literally the only other people. No cars on the road. Are standing on a bridge that you're, yeah, your troop is about to go under. Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah, but that's we want to see them jump on the trucks. That's cool. It just looks yes. cool. <laughs> yes. There is the suspension of disbelief ometer is set to full pelt on this one. But even it's so like there's just some things where I'm absolutely happy to be like, oh well, I mean it is what it is. It, you know, approaching on its own terms. It's actually absolutely ludicrous. And then there's just some things where it's like they just sort of stick out. I don't know. That was just one of them that that stuck out. I don't know why. Also, like there's a shootout on a train where there, there's just people just shooting at a train and there's like innocent people running every it's not clear where any of the bullets are going the fight nobody got hit nobody no got one hit. no one gets hurt it's just an opportunity to film the, the lady shooting a gun in slow motion and for it to look cool and have stuff exploding yeah. don't get me wrong it does look cool it really does it looks amazing and they got a little home alone uh cameo in there because of it i love it mad i i don't think that was necessarily a home alone but there yeah there's a, a mannequin reveal in, in the, in the oh in the that's what you mean i get um, it very nice which to me like it reminded me of home alone but they sure, do sure, a sure. thing later with lion king that was uh, was very satisfying to watch because okay. in the moment itself you go eh, it's kind of like simba and but then it gets used later <laughs> As a reference, you're like, oh, that was deliberate. Set them up and they knock them down. And it's exactly those little points where you go like, oh, man, it's not just blatantly. They're they're still using it. It's not just, nah, that's a cool moment. Yes, they are. But usually it does have a point to make. It just does so very bluntly. Yes. And if, yeah, and if subtlety is your thing, stay far away. If subtlety is your thing, then... Bollywood mass entertainers are not for you, yeah. Because they don't do anything subtle, including love and, yeah, cuteness. Yeah. yeah. This is, uh, everything is so on the nose, you know, the funny stuff on the nose, the romance stuff on the nose, drama on the nose, action on, on the nose, through the eye, um, in the guts, through, around the neck. It's yeah, occasionally. <laughs> Two people get hanged in this movie, and it's very unpleasant both times. Ugh. Like, it's such a tonal yeah. shift. I mean, there's so many tonal shifts, but that is Th- one There's a ton one. of moments where you sort of flinch back in your seat and go, whoa, okay. Even, you know, not minding graphic violence, there, there's some, uh, yeah, moral moments, let's call them that. Yeah. Um, again, in contrast to, well, man and a woman aren't allowed to kiss, but <laughs> here's a child that's dying. Um, it's like, uh, why are you showing me? I, this is not. This is not nice. This is not yeah. nice. But it, it kind of has to be blunt because there's so much happening over an extended period of time. That yeah, dialogue is a lot of exposition and and getting you back up to speed with where you are. I was sitting next to Matt Castelvi, uh, you know, our dear mutual friend. Boom Chicago's Matt Castelvi for the Boom listener. Boom Chicago's very own <laughs> Matt Castelvi. Um, and there's so many times in that movie where he just sort of turns to me like. What's the, is this still the flashbacks? Like, no, we're in a flashback. In a flashback, it's fine. We're gonna come back. That's the bad guy. I know you don't recognize him right now, but that's a young bad guy. I he has less beard, <laughs> but he's a bigger mullet, and it looks yeah. awesome. He looks like an eighties baddie. It's Twenty it's years ago, and just like, but where are? And just at a certain point, he went. But this is impossible for anybody to keep track of, right? This is not just me. I'm like, it's not just you. No, Promise you just me. have to like be you on the ride. Yes. But also, I think you only have to sort of pay attention to what's in front of you at any point, because yep, exactly. if you're confused, then you're probably meant to be confused and it will be revealed and explained at some point in the next two hours. Yeah. Oh, you know what? And that's a great analogy of what it's like to, to, like to smoke weed or do a mushroom. You just have to hold <laughs> on. <laughs> just don't mm. try and explain it. Right. Feel it. Experience it. Yeah. Make up your mind about it afterwards. Yeah. Because you're 100% right when you say, if you're confused, you're probably meant to be confused because they don't do things subtly. So yeah. if they haven't given you any information, there's a reason. Get in, get your popcorn, get your treats, get your drinks, strap in for three 
plus hours. Ideally, ideally take a couple of friends. Yes. Even, even here. I mean, I don't even have you to go with now. I'm literally <laughs> like, I've, I've only been here like, like a, a month or so. Like I need to, I've yeah. got to get new friends to come and see these movies with me. Yeah. hundred percent. But yeah, it's, I mean, it is a, a crowd pleaser. And I think, I think I preferred it to Patan. Me too. I think. I don't know if I'm going to rewatch them and change my mind, but coming out, I felt more sort of satisfied by this one. I think it, it covers a lot of the same ground, you know, in terms of not literal plot, but, you know, structure and what it delivers as a movie. But I think it just, it felt like it hung together for me slightly better than Patan. Yes, yeah, same, especially after the second viewing, which is why I want to see Patan again, just to see if that changes it. If the first yeah. time just isn't enough, weirdly, because there's so much going on uh, that you miss some of the odd subtleties that are in between there, I guess. Um, yeah, for me also, because there was such a strong message, um, a, a more, well, more, more of a message I could get behind essentially. Uh, cause I think Bataan is just like pride about country and stuff, which a lot of these action blockbusters are, but this has a very moral message. And like he, f he literally forces healthcare into submission within five hours <laughs> and yeah. makes it better. Yeah. And the it's, speech to camera makes at the some end good is points. phenomenal. It just makes them with a sledgehammer to the face, right? Yes. It reminded me of Batman 66. There's an episode in that where Batman runs for mayor. Robin questions Batman and says, look, I think we need to get bigger posters and bigger buttons. And Batman is like, no, 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 no. It's about the message. If we live in a country where people are distracted by the size of posters and buttons, we're in a lot of trouble. And he kind of does that wow. to camera as well. <laughs> um, it's phenomenal. And it's very much about, please think before you vote that my favorite line out of that, uh, and because I'm not going to do justice to his delivery, which does a, a lot of heavy lifting as well. But I thought there was a great bit of writing where he said like five hours, we think about a mosquito coil that lasts for five hours. So long, how much does it smoke? How effective is it? What color is it? Can I hang it up? when we don't give that time to the people who decide our future for five years. And you're like, yeah, he's, he's right. He's, he's so right. Yeah. This is true. And like, he doesn't want to do this, but. I want to say they really snuck in some um, sort of, not even subversive, but like they really snuck in messages. They didn't sneak them in at all. They are no. writ large. <laughs> like, yeah. I was halfway through. I was going, so Republicans were upset by the Barbie movie. <laughs> and that was very subtle, certainly right. compared to this and what it was saying. Because the Barbie movie at the end is just going, hey. Hey, no spoilers. I still haven't seen it yet. <laughs> this is not a spoiler. <laughs> uh, but the, the message of the movie, for me anyway, at the end of it was, hey, maybe maybe think about what you want to do and respect if the people around you who want to do what they want to do. Which, you know, the Republicans took as taking a torch to freedom itself for oh, some boy. reason. Uh, which, in my mind, is a very basic, like, yeah, try and figure out what makes you happy. Do that without hurting anybody else. Like, it's a beautiful message. That's kind of what it is. And this is just a very hard-handed, like, you son of a bitch, you better not vote again for assholes <laughs> <laughs> that get bribed and, like, corrupt our right. system. <laughs> but it also is, like... You know, in in some way quite liberal, but while at the same time there's like constant sort of like graphic beat downs, and the, yeah. there's like no reprieve for the for the bad guy and and his sort of way out. While again, you know, fitting in a kind of screenplay logic way is quite. You're sort of like, oh, I don't. I mean, I get it, but like uh, a bit. No, you know? to to maybe come back to the. Doc Hung, real quick, is that is, there's constant reminders that this man is evil. And which, at a certain point, you're like, we get it. It's okay now. He is <laughs> and the a dog bad is man. certainly like, hey, that was so not necessary. Why are, mm -hmm. you, are you making me watch this? Uh, which I can totally get behind. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if that's what you wanted to say, but that was a very <laughs> no, stark I mean, reminder. Literally, of, it's yeah. like everything that's coming to him, he deserves. And yet somehow they make yeah. his comeuppance to feel quite like. Oh, Not is this enough. feels like no, like it's almost a bit too much, you know, like there's so many ways that the baddies die in movies. But this one, while 
you know, he deserves it and fits in a sort of narrative way. He's a bit like, oh, gosh, it's quite, I don't know. It feels quite Republican in its approach, you know. It's literally the death penalty. It's an eye for an eye, yeah. Like, yeah. (laughs) Like, it's really brutal. Anyway, that was just another one uh, of an odd, tonally jarring moment of of many. And then there's only, like one little scene after that and then it's credits which is also a little jarring because we're like wait wait that's it yeah yeah like yeah. when they're done with it they're also done with it during the credits they're like should we um should we go to a studio set of a sort of mediterranean country and sing a song yeah, yeah, yeah go on then come yeah, on guys will. oh do you want srk twice yes you can yes please if there's a way to get people to sit through uh, a lot of credits is that i'm staying i'm on board if the avenger movies did that can you imagine? Oh, oh. we just so pray good. for outtakes, but I mean, this is this is next level. There's, I, I mean, I think I've I've said almost everything I want to say about this movie. It's just a great time. I think all the things that we've probably said about RRR and Patan, you know, the the highlights, it it follows a formula and it does it very well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think I think the action beats in this. I mean, we should talk probably about that. There's a lot of great stuff in here. The opening is ten out of ten. Should have been a Batman scene. Loved it. Batman never got that respect. Yeah, that is a bloody great point, Emil, isn't it? When you look up at him and the sky's behind him, he jumps to it's yes. The shadow. It starts with the shadow. Immediately, I was thinking Batman. It's like Batman never got this. The looming shadow that literally rolls over all these bad guys because he's walking up this mountain and there's. It's an incredible superhero entrance for a not superhero, but you know, to all intents and purposes, the people in these movies do behave like superheroes a lot of the time. Gods, yeah. And there is, yeah, there's some, that, that scene is great. The shooting the guns in slow motion is very enjoyable. If geographically confusing, there's <laughs> the, the interval block is absolutely batshit Insanity. crazy. I, oh, the weapons. <laughs> I wanted to mention this. I've seen this in a few movies now where someone is just brandishing a weapon, but it isn't like a thing you've ever seen before. It seems like they've someone's gone into a, a metal workshop and just gone, Spoke right. Some shit together. Get that spiky thing and that thing that spins round and put it on that pipe and put that on it. And then I guess that's it. He just finds that on the way in and it it looks cool and it s- slices it works people like up. like a charm. <laughs> and he can just twat everybody in the face with it. That scene is. <laughs> is absolute madness. The road scene has a lot of very fun car road explosion action flips. Some biological sp- warfare with eggs. <laughs> in spite of it, that's true. <laughs> in spite of it being on the emptiest road you've ever seen. It's great. The, and it, the end also has some, some mad stuff. It, it suffers only mildly from my sort of bugbear of so much Indian action cinema, uh, and I and it's I don't know what it's a I think it's just stems from the old ways meeting the new ways of standing in the middle of a massive room. Sort of it's like old Bruce Lee movies or like Dick Tracy yeah. where he punches all those guys in a circle. Where it's just like we're just going to film this in 120 frames a second and we're going to speed ramp the shit out of everything. Where it's like he stands there and then just guys come in like they just wait their turn to have a move yep. done on them. <laughs> and it doesn't happen as much as in some other stuff, but it happens a little bit more than I would like in the end. <laughs> where, yeah, fair where it's a sort of all-star generational team up. And there's just like, well, there's just about five guys there with guns. What are they? I can clearly see them. What are they doing? Why aren't yeah. they shooting them? Are they waiting their turn to get close <laughs> yeah. enough to get kicked or flipped or or whatever? And I mean, you know, what what are we complaining about after the previous two and a half hours? But yeah, <laughs> this is that's my feedback right. <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for for Atlee <laughs> for an entire industry. Can we just like have less people Maybe. waiting to get kicked? Yeah. Make them all come at the same time. Maybe, or maybe just not have that many people or yeah. figure out a way where they can come in one at a time. But I mean, yeah, it's complaining about something stupid in 
a movie that is full of batshit. And I mean that in the best way. It's, it's so, it, it's all there. It's all on screen. Mm -hmm. Like every rupee of the budget is up there. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. Like it's so, it's just fun. Just take it on its own terms and you'll have a great time. I think. I think so too. There's, there's always a thing in the back of my head though, watching this where I'm like, Am I missing some sort of cultural context or history context that, you know, uh, maybe put stuff in a different light? And I like where I would just bombing along and bombing along, enjoying it like, oh, this is fun. And then maybe later gets explained. Uh, yeah, you were laughing at something horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's definitely a few things that probably went over our our heads. I mean, all, you know, all of his sort of quote unquote acts of terrorism are, are based on like real things, I think. So that probably if it's like a saw mentality, like I'm going to make you pay for your sins with yes. your sin. Yes, it is. And also I think there's the some stuff that sort of movie industry stuff that has probably passed both of us by because this guy I think is a Tamil director and this is his first uh, Bollywood movie. Bollywood. Okay. And there's so there's some people from his uh tamil movies in this or there's you know characters or references to things there's loads of stuff like that that i've sort of heard about or read about that obviously went way over my head and i'm sure gotcha. you the same but you know give us time we're getting hey, there one movie at a time second yeah one movie at a time but seeing it a second time with nervy there's a cameo that happens during one of the songs uh and uh, you know at first you know, i didn't know who that was yeah. I just assumed it was another movie star because we had this with Patan where he just shows up and you're like, what? We just, we just get a little duo dance with, an, with another star with <laughs> yeah. zero yeah. to do with this movie. And it's just like, hey, I'm here too. All right, bye. Right. <laughs> and then you move right. along. In this case, it's the director of the movie. Oh. So it's essentially just, you know, Indiana Jones dancing. Spielberg comes along. Hey, what's up? We're just dancing together. <laughs> and, then, and then gives him a kiss and goes away. That's like the end of RRR, right? Yeah, at the end of our hour, same thing. Like, yeah, we're gonna have the director in this. It's gonna well, I a little uh, bit. yeah, I absolutely didn't notice that. I mean, obviously, oh, but I Chef's don't... Kiss. Yeah, I love that so much. Like, hey, I'm the director. <laughs> I'm in the same shirt. <laughs> Hi. Dance a little bit. Bye. I'm, in this, I'm in the movie. It's like Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> he just puts himself in there, one little sneaky cameo every time. But the, the exact opposite, almost like without not sneaky with, in any Hitchcock way. is like, oh, he's in the background somewhere, crossing the street, and he's like, no, he's in the middle of the frame next to the movie star, <laughs> sitting on one of those like director canvas chairs, holding a massive <laughs> megaphone. Hello, it's me. I oh made my this. God. Fair, fair, absolute play. I mean, I hope I noticed that on second viewing. You've you've been to see it twice. There's every time there's so much more to note, which I feel like has to lead us to one of the arguably hardest decisions we've made for your action oh. replay moment. <laughs> I, from memory, have written down four potentials already. <laughs> okay um and i'm sure you have since it's in your more recent memory got some absolute treats in there uh, i'll maybe i'll just run these run these by you and see if any of sure. these land for you yes. i mean okay maybe it's maybe it's three technically but srk's entrance i think could just be Every an action time. replay moment you know first yeah. five ten minutes of the movie absolutely great all right but in terms of smaller more memorable parts that made me and i laughed out loud a lot during this movie in in a good way 100%. in the best way there's our three i i wrote down kick double jump flip does that does that mean anything to you there's a kick double jump flip there's a bit where there's two guys and sok i think is like holding on to one of them he jumps oh, in the backwards? air kicks the guy behind him yeah. After he's kicked him, he's still in the air. Then yeah, he flips, flips over, <laughs> lands on the guy's shoulders, then flips the guy back. I mean, it's, yes. it's gravitationally impossible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> That's one. Second one, I'll just I just wrote knife mouth attack. Yes. <laughs> is, both times I turned to the person next to me and just went, "He's been attacking them with a knife in his mouth." <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening right now. That's literally. But that's all you why you laugh. You know how people laugh when they can't deal with grief 
or like mm-hmm. something tragically sad. But the same, it's just an overload of emotions, right? And that's what's happening a ton of times in these movies with just so much happening on screen yeah. and you get so much input that Shock yeah, it comes out and giggles delight. and laughter. Oh, yeah. And pure All delight. All at the same yeah. time. It's like a little baby just going, it's more ice cream. That's exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> it. And the other one I wrote down was Bazooka Shield. Oh, and they both move backwards? Yeah. And that review. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I screamed. Oh, really I mean, I screamed a lot with with the full room, obviously, with any reveal or like a moment like that. But that was that was so picture perfect. That's on par with uh, the beginning of Natu Natu in RRR when he spins into position behind him and they do the shoulder shimmy. That kills me every time too. It's so perfectly in sync. Oh, there's so plus. many action replays. It's not what my action you, replay. What did you have? I, really I didn't get any we were... of them. No. Incredible. Uh, well, I, one, there's so many, but the one that I talked about right after as a sort of a non spoilery pitch, which obviously, again, it's, it, it is a spoiler in that sense because when, if you follow it along for the first time, it's incredible. It's on the highway chase scene uh, when Baba goes, like, I'm just going to, I'm going to head out front real quick on his motorcycle um, and then goes out front. I, wrote that down. I did starts. write that down in, in my notes. <laughs> His rubber heel on the tarmac creates sparks that slowly fly up and light lights his cigar that is ever present in his mouth. He steps off the motorcycle, flings open the, the gas cap, takes a puff of his cigar, then throws a cigar into the gasoline tank which ignites, and he kicks it towards the oncoming traffic of bad guys, and it explodes, and his son drives through it. It's so incredible. Nice cinema. But the fact that it's so easy to follow along, you're like, no. No. <laughs> no! Yes. Oh my yes. God. Yes. Yes, of yes. course. Of course he does. Of course. And it becomes a fun game, because as soon as that started happening with those sparks, I'm like, please light a cigar, please light a cigar. That would be so cool. So I also, my, the one disappointment I have with this movie, action-wise, is in that same uh, uh, scene at the beginning, there's a gun that lands in the windshield of a car. And I 100% thought somebody's going to shoot the trigger of that gun, shooting that gun into the vehicle, killing somebody. And it doesn't end up happening, and I was so it's disappointed. A missed opportunity. But the sparks yeah. made up for it. Yeah. <laughs> easily. <laughs> easily. And so easily. It is so like easily. one of the, there's so many moments where, I don't, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but if you're like asked like an 11 year old boy, what, yeah. what would be like the coolest thing you could think of that would happen? And they'd be like, what about, okay, if, <laughs> yes. if, his, if the if his shoes and sparks came out and then they went on his cigar and then he puffed it <laughs> and then he opened the thing and then he threw it. There's like no sort of like respect for reality or no. it's just like, why? what? would a really cool thing be yeah it, it is it's really cool 100 it's really cool because <laughs> you say oh he gets two entrances and i'm like well he gets a lot more i mean yes he gets two first entrances which are big but <laughs> right right he right, also right. gets an entrance as the warden which is also incredible which That's includes true. fireworks and falling flower petals <laughs> yes uh, that yeah. leads into a song sort of hero moments i suppose yes hero moments perfect because the fucking good old Baba, when he first shows up, has a thing where he's standing in like this little tower. Uh, he punches two people. One goes through the ground. One goes through the window. And he busts open this pipe. And like, yeah. oh, that kind of looks cool. But then he jumps through the gap in the floor through which all the steam is going. Does a superhero landing. Looks up. And it's just backlit steam. It looks yeah. awesome. It's it looks so, so good. cool. It's so and good. like, oh, we don't do that enough with our superheroes in the West to just kind of show up. Like, hey, I'm yeah. here. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> Hiya. There's a great fan movie of Batman where like he lands in this puddle of water and he, he just has the longest cape. And as he rises, it's like the tarmac itself is m- like building up Batman as he as he rises up. It looks so wow. cool. The cape is obviously impractical, but it doesn't matter. It just <laughs> yeah, looks yeah. so it cool. It looks cool. Then you want to be Batman. I will end on this. I think I'm ready to go and see this movie again. <laughs> go and see Joanne. See it in a cinema. 
you don't have to see it twice. Just go and oh. see it once. You, I don't think you can be mad at it being three hours when it's so much ridiculous fun. Yeah. Well, we are, we've done it. Emil, thank you so much. It's episode Ooh. one of season three. We have kicked off. It's going to be a very exciting season. You're going to hear from some new people who you haven't heard before. Ooh. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to ask Emil live on air so he can't say no. Hopefully, Emil, <laughs> you'll come back later in the season for a rematch. For uh, Oh, I didn't realize, but I've won this one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure, then sure. I'll be back. Then I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> to defend your title. To defend <laughs> yes, your title. To defend my title. I'd like to be defending champion. Thank you. If people would like to find you on the internet, where would you like them to head? The only thing I would like you to head, because I think it's fun and silly, is fireside.panda on Instagram. It will baffle their tiny little brains. <laughs> you don't, you won't understand it, which is kind of the point. It's a little media things I make during improv shows at Boom Chicago that end up in the show. Um, and they, most of them are just a recap of the show, essentially. So that's why you. Don't it's a niche get on a niche why. on a niche. Yeah, you gotta love it. Well, you don't have to, but that's the only thing I have to plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to get in touch with the show as an entity, uh, we mm -hmm. exist on Twitter at Dodge This Pod. I exist as a human man at Simon Fielder on Twitter and Instagram. I would love it if you would rate and review this on your podcast app of choice, but mostly Apple Podcasts or Spotify, since they're the main ones. And if you love us and you've just won the lottery and you want to support the show with real earth money, there is a link in the show notes where you can do that. That brings us to the end of episode one of season three of Dodge This Action Movies Unleashed. We will be back in two weeks to get deep on more action movies from around the world. I'm Simon Fielder and that was Emil Striker Birdier. Woo! <laughs> there he goes. He's gone off into the sunset. Bye. See Bye. you next time. Goodbye.